the grace to pray. Hmm. I really envy people who, who I know can pray. And I have never for once thought I can ever pray. Even though most of the times I pray, I usually do by prompting. And when I don't have this prompting, it is difficult to pray. So I still wonder if I could ever pray like people who are here pray for five, six, eight, ten hours, not to even mention 24 hours of the day. Recently, I heard God, I believe, tell me when the time to pray for hours comes, you will pray. This, I believe, when it, when it comes, we will have the easy yoke and the light burden according to Matthew 11.30. But this morning, you know, I just got a call from my mom to lay a complaint. And the first thing she said, in her words, she said, Udwak, listen to what I am about to tell you. I know you can pray and pray very well. This alone really encouraged me. And I know whether she, whatever she has noticed or have seen or heard or perceived could have been, couldn't have been at my prompting but the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 12 10 says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitant of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me when they are pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in the bitterness. Of his firstborn. I know there are some of us with no doubt feel this way. You feel you cannot pray. You don't even know how to pray. So you don't want to ever be in a place where they pray, not to talk of leading prayer sessions. The truth is, it is not the eloquence of prayer or the length of prayer that makes prayer effective. Rather, it is the level of grace on the vessel praying that makes the difference. So it's not the person, but the level of grace upon the person. And I guess, and guess what? Those who feel they can't pray probably have the greater grace on them to pray and get answers because it is not at their prompting, but by the prompting of the Holy Spirit through the grace it pours on people. Hebrews 4, 16 says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help in time of need. To help in time of need. James 4, 6 also says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. In Zechariah 12.10 that we read, we see that God himself promised to pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication, meaning God has poured his grace on both our leaders and on us who are the followers. Because he said, and the inhabitant of Jerusalem, and he didn't specify, meaning that the grace is available to every inhabitant of Jerusalem. If you believe this, say this first prayer. Father, according to your word, please pour upon us the spirit of grace and supplication to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Notice the profound key point. God is the initiator of truly heartfelt prayers. He gives the grace and it is the grace that causes supplication. So nobody prays without the prompting or grace to pray because it is the grace that causes supplication. Because the grace allows us to see things correctly and then we have the burden to pray. But you cannot see things correctly in times of prayer if you do not understand the real reason. You know, you should or the purpose to pray. Have you ever asked yourself, who was the first person to pray? In the scriptures why do we have to pray why did god institute prayer 
when God can just step into our lives and do whatever He feels like doing because He rules and reigns in the affairs of men. But God waits upon us to call upon Him before He can act on our behalf. I came across the book of Miles Moro on prayer. And the introduction of the book alone has set me on fire in this context, talking about prayer. Let me quote a little from him, or just the definition of what he, how he defines prayer. He defines prayer as a man's license for heaven. He defines prayer as a man's, man's license for heaven intervention or heaven intervention or divine intervention in our affairs. Meaning, if you don't pray, and by extension, someone praying for you nothing will happen around you and for you he said when god made man he gave the dominion to them because he made them male and female genesis 1 26 27 you can look at the account genesis 1 26 27 let them he said let them have dominion let them and he said and bless them both because he said he made them male and female and god blessed them so in so doing God gave the authority of everything that happens in the art space to man and anyone that must operate in the earthly realm must be a spirit because man is a spirit that has a soul but lives in a body. Meaning that you cannot operate everything that does not have the mortality, the body cannot op- is not, is not is not legally licensed to operate in the space art. Meaning the entire dominion belongs to man. So, and he said, he gave them the right to operate. Hence, God created prayer so man can call on him for communion, in devotion, and for help every time. No wonder the day Adam told God he was naked. God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, according to the scripture. So, God loves fellowship. And what I know, what I understand is the fact that when the Holy Spirit discovers you begin to assign or begin to give him attention or time, he begins to come closer to you. And when he comes closer to you, he begins to reveal the deep things, the deep truth around, even unto you. Psalm 50, 14 to 16 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most time. Look at verse 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Verse 16 says, But unto the wicked God said, What hast thou to do to declare my status? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant into thy mouth. Meaning, God does not honor the cry of a wicked man. So when you don't pray, Invariably, you are telling God not to act on your behalf, and it is the reason God said in Jeremiah 5 1, Run ye to and fro, though the street of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon. Ezekiel 22 30 to 31 also declares, and I sought a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, it, but I found none. Ha, Father, I pray when you are looking for a man in this time and generation, you will find me. Ah, Lord, I pray that when you are looking for a man in this generation, you will find everyone listening to this. In the mighty name of Jesus. But 31 says, Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my mouth. Their own way I have recompensed upon their deed, said the Lord God. You might also want to read the account of Isaiah 59, 13-20. Recently I watched a movie and through this movie God expounded this to me. Though the film talks about the guardians that prevent the earth from deteriorating, their job is to push back darkness. They have their places in the galaxies and have been empowered to push back darkness from the world. But watch this. What the devil does is to attack this guardian, then come in from their space, 
the garden must be complete to fend off this darkness because one cannot cover for one. They must be about their ministry. They must be about their role. They must be about their job. And that is why the hand cannot do the work of the leg. It's only in an abnormal situation that that happens. There is no time because there's no time to do that. Their job is to defend the earth through their places and in unity of purpose do their jobs. The question, why are you not occupying your space to help push back this darkness? Matthew 5, uh, 5.14 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on hill cannot be hidden. Listen to me, young man. Why have you chosen the role of condemning and talking down men of God when you can correct them in their place of prayer? When you can call, when you call on their master to help correct those who are innocently in error, there are so many of them that are innocently in error. Why are you allowing darkness through your own space? I know the reason is because you do not know that one of the chosen to push back darkness. We cannot see these signs except the grace put it in us, the desire to understand and see why Christ was really crucified. It is the grace that allows people to see the crucified Lord, to see our filthiness, to see that you know, the, the cross is the only way out of sin. Then, that leads to repentance and a cry for help that comes from deep within. And only then can we truly accept the Lord into our hearts and be saved. It is impossible to be saved without the spirit of grace, showing you the crucified and resurrected Lord. This is why no man can boast that they, can, they got saved because they did something special. It is not of human works. It is by grace and grace alone. This is the reason we have been chosen to take our place as we pray for the promised child, for the promised grace to supersede the abundant sin in the world. Romans 5.20 declares, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. When the body is from within, we will pray the will of God, but when our prayers are motivated by need, we will always pray amiss and not even have the reason to pray at all. The moment your eyes are open to see the crucified Lord, the reason he died for the Lord, the reason he died for the world, then the spirit of grace has visited you. The spirit that also enables and empowers prayer according to Romans 8, 26, because he helps our infirmities. And it is the reason we must ask God to release the spirit of grace and supplication on us. If you are among the 7,000, who have refused to bow their knees to Baal, join us to pray these prayers. Father, please pour upon us the spirit of grace and supplication. Father, please pour upon us the spirit of grace and supplication in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please help us travel and pray in line with your will and with your will alone in the mighty name of Jesus. The Father, Please grant me the heart gripped by your grace. A heart gripped by your grace. Grant unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that offers salvation to everyone. Thank you, because your grace offers salvation to everyone. Let men in their different aspects, different places in life, different locations begin to see the grace that has appeared. In the mighty name of Jesus. Was a Father, please help me do what I'm here for. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me stand in my place to fulfill your will on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Empower the earth through me. Lighten up the world, Lord, through me. Let my light so shine, Lord, this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that from your fullness, I have received grace upon grace. For grace and truth have come through you in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I thank you that I have been saved by your grace through faith. This is not my doing. 
but it is the gift from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for you are my son and my shield. I thank you that you give grace and glory for no good thing will you be told from those who walk uprightly in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, that grace and peace are multiplied unto me in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally say, Father, I thank you that you have justified me freely by your grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you can be rest assured that the Spirit of God will begin to put the body into pray in the mighty name. Hello there, my name is Udwa Akpan. Thank you so much for watching today's teaching. If this has really blessed you, please do not forget to subscribe and to like and also to share. There could be somebody out there that just needs to also hear what you just listened to. I want to also, by this video, encourage you to become the journalist of your life. Taking note of some things the Holy Spirit might want to impute into your spirit. God wants to start with a new generation it can depend on. God depends on us to pass the message of hope around. Of course, you know there are so many deteriorating messages going on around, but God needs you as the salt of the earth and the light of the world to pass the message of hope and let people know what he can actually do in this time and dispensation. And that is where God so much depends on you. Thank you so much. See you another time. God bless you real good.